Hello everybody, welcome back to another AI video and this one we're looking at Consensus AI. Now for those of you that don't know, this is an incredible academic search engine that's powered by artificial intelligence. Now Consensus AI, I have to state right up front here, is very important to keep in mind that this is an academic search engine as opposed to a standard search engine like Google or DuckDuckGo or Bing or something like that. This search engine, although it's powered by AI, the best thing about it, in my opinion, is it goes directly to the source. So what I mean by that is you can flip through original academic papers, studies, literature reviews, abstracts, summaries, all those different things that you need as a researcher. And whether you're a PhD student, maybe you're an undergrad finishing up an academic term paper, or maybe you're just like me who wants to learn a little more about a specific topic and not get the you know, search engine, keyword optimized, clickbait stuff you often get with, uh, you know, regular search engines. So with that in mind, let's dig in. Let's take a look at this academic search engine. All right. So the first step is you want to go to consensus.app. I will, of course, put a link in the description below. And then you get two options. You can try it for free if you do not have an account. Or if you do have an account, I have a free account. I'll just click on login and let's see what we get here. So I'm logged in with my Google account. And again, it's free to sign up. So give it a crack. Now, in the middle here, you'll see here that there is a search bar or a prompt bar. This is where the results come from. So what you got to do is type in a research question. What does it say? It says, ask a research question. And then it even goes further. It gives you five ideas that you can start off with. So let's see what we got here. What is the effect of stoicism on mental health? What would Marcus Aurelius say about that? I don't know. Okay, does fact checking enhance media credibility? Okay, this is a very, you know, very big question these days. So let's click on this one and see what the academic sources say, um, as opposed to the political ones. <laughs> so there we go. Does back checking enhance media credibility? Well, when we select it and we hit enter, look at this. Look at all of these different options that pop up. So the first one here is the ineffectiveness of fact checking labels on news memes and articles. And it says here the result or the synopsis is fact checking labels do not improve individual news post credibility perceptions, but increase judgments of a site's quality overall okay that's very interesting it gets more interesting here because it actually says what journal it was published in so it was published in mass communications and society here are the authors here are the number of citations the year it was published and yeah just more and more here if i want to save this to a list for example like i'm creating a, uh, a reference list and this is one of the ones i want to use okay i can click on save here and when i do that it says create a new list I'll create a list called Does Fact Checking Enhance Media Credibility? All right, there we go. I've got a list here and it's been added. Very, very cool. If I decide I want to look at this article specifically, I click on it and here we go. We get the abstract. Very, very cool stuff. Now, you will notice over here that there are study snapshots. Uh, we're going to take a look at that in a second. That's part of the AI side of things. But just for free, you get this level of functionality right out of the box without having to pull out your credit card. Pretty cool stuff. All right, let's head back here and take a look a little bit further down here. So again, there's more and more different articles here and studies. You'll notice here that they apply tags to them. So this one here is non-RCT trial, and then it tells you exactly what that is. This is an experiment that is either not randomized or not controlled. It was part of a rigorous journal, so it gives a size score. It is in the top 50% of journals measured by size score. So just more and more highly cool stuff here. This one here says highly cited. So this one has a whole bunch of citations compared to the other ones. And this one has 71 citations. So you may want to take a look at that one. And as we go down a little further here, uh, there's not too many more here. I'm just going to click on load more. This one is an observational study. So, you know, just things like that. Observational study, highly cited, uh, non-RCT trial, just, just stuff like that. So there you go, guys. Now, however, let's go back up to the top here. I want to show you Synthesize and Copilot. These are the AI functionality or features that are definitely worth a look. All right, actually, before we hit the AI side of things and I show you Synthesize, Copilot, and Study Snapshot, I do want to bring your attention up here to the top to Filter. If you click on Filter, it is worth noting that the we just sort of filtered in the previous bit. We did it by eyeball and we looked at the type of study and, you know, the journals. But if you have specific requirements, for example, you can't have a article that's lot older than 15 or 20 years you can pick the year here you can go ahead and select a method so if you're required to have randomized controlled trials you can simply select these boxes here controlled studies 
etc. So you can go ahead and dig in that way as well. So again, if you have uh, requirements or restraints, consider using the filters option. All right, now with that out of the way, let's get into the AI side of things. All right, so let's dig into some of the more AI specific functionality. The first one I wanna show you is synthesize. I'm gonna hover over it here. And then very quickly it says it synthesizes multiple papers. It enables you to have their AI read several papers and synthesize the findings. Very, very useful, especially if you're doing things like a literature review or a meta review, for example. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and toggle that on. When I do that, look at this here. We get two things. We get a summary, it's in beta, but hey, look at this. It says these studies suggest that while fact-checking may not always enhance the credibility of individual news posts, it generally increases perceptions of a site's quality, trust in media, and accuracy of voter perceptions, etc. So it gives you a very good summary of 10 papers that it analyzed. On the right side here, it gives you a consensus meter. And this is very interesting because it'll tell you, yes, 86% said yes to the uh, does fact-checking enhance media credibility. Okay, 86% yes, 14% no. So some of these papers are against it. So look at that here. So if I was, you know, doing a review and I was looking for, you know, particular papers that take the yes or the no side, it nicely labels them for me. So most of them were yes, a couple of unknown, but this one here was a no. So let's go back up to this top one here. I would dig into this one, click on that, and then, you know, read the abstract and use this in my review and say, here's the pro side, here's a paper that's against it. That type of thing, that type of functionality is built into consensus app. It's awesome. All right, the next AI specific type functionality I wanna show you is their co-pilot. I'm gonna turn synthesize off and I'm gonna turn co-pilot on. And while I do that, look at this. When I hover over it, it says, it enables to get answers, generate content and more with your AI research assistant. This is literally like an AI research assistant, but it's more like having like chat GPT built right into the search engine here. So right here, when I turned it on, You'll see here that it analyzed 10 papers and then it gives you an intro, which is great. It gives you key insights and it gives you the insights from the specific paper. So this isn't, you know, poor quality citations and references. This gives you the references specifically and it doesn't hallucinate. Unlike other LLMs, this is right from the source. So if I hover over one here, it says, okay, this is from Mass Communication and Society. There's the author. Okay, and if I wanna go dig in further, I just click on one and it drops me down and it shows me what article or abstract or study, et cetera, it came from. So this is just an incredibly useful tool for those of you that are doing, you know, meta research or maybe you're doing, you know, a literature review. You definitely have to check this out. All right, now let's get on to the last AI tool that I want to show you. All right, and last but not least, another AI component to this search engine here, or academic search engine, is Study Snapshot. Take a look at this. If I want to dig in a little further into an individual specific study, I can just click on study snapshot here and then it'll open up and it'll show you the population. So in this case, it was, it was based off journalists in a workflow setting. The sample size, in this case, it's not applicable. The methods was a user study evaluation and then, you know, well, interestingly, the outcomes. And then it'll give you that to accuracy of the fact checking platform, relevance of returned evidence. So. This is how you use Consensus AI's academic search engine. If you're a student, if you're a PhD student, undergrad, if you're a professor, or if you're just a layman like me who just wants to look things up and get the right answers, or academic sources as opposed to, you know, Google sources, this is worth a look, guys. Links in the description below. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Thanks for watching.